Good afternoon and welcome to the East Greenwich High School 2020 graduation ceremony. First, on behalf of this class of seniors, I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude to the teachers, administration, parents, and students who have made today possible. A great deal of hard work and planning has gone into creating a memorable experience for us today. And for that, we are all truly thankful. And congratulations to the historic East Greenwich High School class of 2020. I don't think many of us thought walking into the building on August 28th that our senior year would be the year we learned the most in high school, but here we are. I'd always imagined this year full of milestones and celebration, but I could have never imagined the amount of personal growth and challenge these past nine months have presented us with. The COVID-19 pandemic has, after all, brought something most of us have never seen before in our lives, uncertainty. For many, this is the first time we lack a clear vision for what our future will look like, for what our next step will be. These past few months have knocked many off their course and forced us to question what truly matters as we move forward. But sometimes losing your way helps you find the path to where you were always meant to be. As we move through these strange times, we should embrace the uncertainty of our next step because with it comes freedom, independence, and the ability to chart our own course. I once said during our eighth grade graduation that I'm beyond excited to see the people we all develop into in high school. Today, I say I am beyond thrilled to see how those people change the world. I know classmates that would have my vote for president could run a company or release an album tomorrow. In fact, you'll have the privilege to hear some of them speak and perform today. But I think even more importantly, I know students that demonstrate unconditional goodwill, kindness, and generosity each and every day. I am hopeful for the future of this country and the future of the world because of the kind hearts and bright minds in this class. But we owe this bright future truly to this community. From the days of playing Foursquare on the Frenchtown and Meadowbrook blacktop, we've been supported by dedicated teachers and faculty. The relationships we've built and the lessons we've received will continue to impact us long after we graduate today. And for that, we say thank you. Since those early days of elementary school, we have grown wildly diverse in our interests and personalities. But we've always shared a bond with one another, one of mutual respect and camaraderie. While I'm disappointed we never saw a traditional senior year, never got to dance at our last prom night, nor got to be together during senior week, we will have a different shared experience that will unite us long after today. While that may not have been the ending we imagined to high school, it is an undoubtedly profound and historic achievement. Cherish this moment. For as much as we've lost, we've gained so much more. An education not only of arithmetic and literature, but of principles and character. Relationships and connections that will continue to help us grow long after this day. An experience in high school unlike any other, the keys to a future worth fighting for. This end is only the beginning. Thank you. Four long years ago, in a time where you could shake hands and sit inside of Chipotle, the class of 2020 took its first steps inside the doors of the East Greenwich High School. The important lessons we learned the first year helped shape the journey we would each take through the next three and a half years. We came to learn that walkers were irrelevant we had exactly six minutes and 38 seconds to beat the buses after school ended. And there in fact was no elevator to the pool on the roof of the high school. After settling in, we set out to establish ourselves as a class to be remembered by our teachers, this town, and inadvertently the history books. We started our time here as freshmen writing daunting portfolio essays, lip syncing one hit wonders on stage and hosting the EG Rumble. As we watched the Patriots complete the greatest comeback in sports history, our class two finished the year stronger than any before. The promise we showed in the classroom, in athletics, and in the community was one that had all of us excited for the next three years together. The curtain opened to our sophomore year as the class of 2020 began transforming from bright-eyed, inexperienced freshmen to ever-maturing high school students. After a disappointing last place finish freshman year, our class climbed the rankings to third place with an impressive sophomore cinema's airband act. 
Thanks to the efforts of the class council and increased student involvement, the class of 2020 was on the rise. Numerous fundraisers held in the winter, like Paint and Pastries Night and a second EG Rumble, would not have been possible without the unconditional support from our community and class advisors. Spring brought on the World War I debate, and the class of 2020 did not disappoint in this EGHS tradition. We outdid ourselves in displaying nationalism, hanging flags, and propaganda throughout the school. After countless hours spent playing diplomacy and preparing for debates in Mr. Kenny and Mr. Perrin's room, a final alliance between Great Britain and Austria-Hungary dominated the other countries. After a memorable sophomore year at EGHS, we were ready for the trials and challenges that were to come junior year. Junior year is notoriously challenging, but the class of 2020 was ready to take it head on. It's when we were first introduced to the college application process and had the pleasure of learning to struggle through much harder classes and the SAT. Junior year is also the start of being upperclassmen, where we got to be on the other side of the gym for pep rally, fought our hardest to win air brand with our road trip themed act, and attended the prom we worked so hard to plan. In order to have the prom we dreamed of, junior year also meant crunch time for fundraising. Over the summer, we held many car washes at the Ronzio's parking lot. Then, during the year, many of our parents' night out fundraisers at Meadowbrook. All of our fundraising was for one elegant evening, prom. This was a time to remember as our class got dressed up for the very night we grew up dreaming about. James and Malayla were crowned prom king and queen, and everyone continued to enjoy their night at Lakeview Pavilion in Foxborough. The night went on flawlessly, as did the rest of our year. We have had a remarkable four years at East Greenwich High School, and this year is no different. Yes, we have had obstacles. Senior year put our resilience to the test, as our activities were compromised by the Triple E in the fall and the coronavirus in the spring. Despite these challenges, we came together as we always have, tackling whatever was thrown at us. We created an unforgettable Olympic-themed airband act, which won us first place by a landslide. We demonstrated our athletic talents with state championships in field hockey, cross country, girls volleyball, and boys ice hockey. Additionally, our artistic talents were shown through a magical production of Cinderella, which showcased our most talented stage performers. While we were never able to watch our classmates perform in the talent show that they worked so hard for, we know that they would have left the audience speechless. There were a lot of things we haven't been able to do this year. We weren't able to play our spring sports seasons, we weren't able to attend our senior prom, and finally we won't be able to walk the stage like we had envisioned. However, while we watched these things be taken away from us, we did not let them defeat us. We haven't been given the end of senior year that we worked for, but our continued effort to support one another and grow from the situation has once again shown our strength as a class and our ability to lean on one another. Even when we cannot be together in our classrooms, there is nothing that can separate the class of 2020 at heart. Thanks, Thanks for, for a great four years. years. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe yesterday suddenly. I'm not half the man I used to be. There's a shadow hanging over. Yesterday, suddenly, why she had to go, I don't know, she wouldn't say, I said something wrong, now I long for yesterday, yesterday. Love was such an easy game to play Now I need a place to hide away Oh, I believe yesterday Why she had to go I don't know, she wouldn't say I said something wrong Love was such an easy game to play Now I need a place to hide away Oh, I believe yesterday mm -hmm. 
I am honored to introduce our class scholars as two of my close friends. Beyond seeing their accomplishments within the classroom, I've had the opportunity to work with them in our local community and have seen them develop into great leaders over these past four years. Given their dedication and commitment to extracurriculars and academics, I have no doubt that they will do amazing things after high school. I would like to welcome our salutatorian, Brant Way. Brant has always stood out as a very hardworking, dedicated student, but he has also been actively engaged in many extracurriculars where he could truly shine. He has won numerous awards as part of the Future Business Leaders of America, math team, and academic decathlon. Brant was also in my advisory all four years, and I admired that he was always willing to help others if they didn't understand something from class. He would put his own work aside to explain certain concepts until they also understood. Next year, he will be attending the New York University Stern School of Business, concentrating in accounting and finance, and I am sure he will find great success. I think we all generally think of the same thing when we hear 2020. Obviously, the fact that it is the 22nd natural number for which the sum of its digits is equal to the number of its digits. Just kidding. Only Andy would think like that. Jokes aside, what 2020 means to me is working together to overcome adversity. A big thanks to everyone who was involved in playing this graduation ceremony for working to provide us with the best experience possible under these challenging circumstances. I would also like to thank the administrators, teachers, and parents for your continued support of students' education. Without you, this day and the years of learning that preceded it would not be possible. I admire how well you have responded to change during these uncertain times. Now, more than ever, do I appreciate the difficult job that teachers have. I would like to congratulate the class of 2020 for our many accomplishments. Not only do we excel inside the classroom, we, we have also made our mark on the fields, in the gym, and on the stage. The girls' field hockey, volleyball, and cross-country con teams have won state championships this year, and the academic decathlon placed at the state level, and the drama club presented dazzling cabaret and Cinderella performances. I would also like to congratulate Nick for winning the Invest Right as a competition and thank Nick for helping to plan a graduation ceremony. Thank you to all the teachers who serve as club advisors and coaches. Without you, we would not have been able to achieve so much. Although many of the things that make this class so great are fueled by competition, requiring tasks, matches, and auditions, the message that I want to share with you today is that life is not always the, the best when it's treated as a competition. If you don't believe me, just look at the effects of people panic buying toilet paper. When people work together, they can achieve better things than when they compete with one another. The current crisis demonstrates both the importance and truth of this message. For example, just think of the many people over the past few months who have been and are working diligently to reopen the economy while protecting public health. Government officials are coordinating the response to this crisis, healthcare workers are joining forces to treat patients, and scientific researchers are collaborating to discover treatments. However, it is not just governmental, medical, and scientific leaders who are helping us overcome this challenge. Everyday people are making personal protective equipment. Thank you, Matt Perot, Micah Talvin, Bryn Shani, and everyone else who is doing so, delivering groceries to the vulnerable, and supporting businesses affected by this crisis. We all help when we wear masks, maintain six feet of distance, and limit unnecessary travel. By working together, we will overcome this challenge, like how Caleb overcame his lung problems. This distance learning period has also given me a greater appreciation for the good times I enjoyed with my classmates. One quote in particular reflects the situation best, at least in my eyes. Don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. I smile when I remember Owen's ability to lift our spirits with a lighthearted joke. I smile when I remember our crepe and ice cream parties in French class, or our Austria-Hungary and Great Britain's victory in the World War I debate. I smile when I remember visiting the Museum of Modern Art and the World Trade Center with my friends in the Model United Nations. I would like to thank a few people who have taught me some important life lessons. 
Ada for teaching me how to lighten up, Bridget for the importance of being on time, Conrad and Joe for the importance of doing my homework, Sunny for the importance of getting good sleep, and Anthony for teaching me what a regatta is, and then reminding me, practically every day for four years. Additionally, I would like to express my gratitude to a few people who have given me a greater appreciation of the arts. Jack for the importance of reading, Mr. Diki Ballas for the difficulty of making films, Matt for your graphic design abilities, Morgan for your just dance skills, as well as Justin and Malayla for your artistic talents. Shout out to Justin for going to New York University with me this fall. I would like to thank my family for their continued support of my education. Without them, I would not have been able to attend such a great university. Back to my original point. There's a silver lining in all of this. We're going to be better leaders and problem solvers because of it. We're seeing world leaders respond to this crisis and having the opportunity, opportunity to see what they did well and where they fell short. These, those are lessons that will make us successful in the future. Our valedictorian, Sunny Sate, was always admired for his work ethic, talent, and character, both in and out of the classroom. Sunny has been a role model as he continually excelled in his academics, which led to him being selected for the impressive titles of National Merit Finalist and U.S. Presidential Scholar Semifinalist. Sunny's drive also extended to his extracurricular activities, where he has been a leader and won several awards in clubs including FBLA, Science Olympiad, and Math Team, to name a few. Aside from his many achievements, Sonny has always been very kind and compassionate. I'm certain that he will make the same impact next year at the University of Pennsylvania Foreign School of Business as he did at EGHS. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to mourn a tremendous loss. Dr. Victor Mercurio, the beloved voice of snow day cancellations and heat wave dismissals junior year, has moved on to greener pastures at Johnson & Wales. Please join us in a moment of silence. Oh wait, this is graduation. Oops. Anyway, welcome. Bonjour, como estas, and via for any Wookiees in the audience. I'm happy to see you all assembled here in the magnificent, ever so rustic parking lot of East Greenwich High School. Even though I can't really appreciate that since I'm probably sweltering to death in my graduation robes. Before I jump into the meat of my speech, I'd like to add a little more music to the mix. It's just a little bit from CeeLo Green. I see you driving round town with the girl I love and I'm like, forget you. The thing is, I can't. I'm never gonna be able to forget the East Greenwich High School class of 2020. We've been through so much, including this pandemic sliding in to rob us of a senior year. Though I do have to admit, COVID was probably smoother than most thirsty guys in Instagram DMs. But overall, I'm not gonna lie, I'm disappointed. Disappointed that I'm giving this speech from my front lawn. Disappointed that I can't see all your lovely smiling faces, as Madame Verone would put it. One last time. Disappointed that I'll never get to give a proper goodbye or thank you to the teachers who did so much. But in the midst of this disappointment, I've come to understand the importance of being alone, or at the very least, not fearing it. I feel like that fear is pretty common in high school, going by the name of FOMO, and it's become a major factor in our decision making. Hell, I'm a vegetarian, which for some reason Josh and I now still refuses to believe. And if my friends or I ever went to McDonald's, I'd probably want to order a Big Mac too. Really, I can't say that I'm immune to FOMO. I never wanted to miss out on anything, so I tried to do everything in high school. Math team, Science Olympiad, FBLA, you name it. I even ran cross country, if you were to generously count my mile time as running. I know Cody didn't, given his blazing five minute miles. I just couldn't stand the thought of being left behind. Perhaps all of you felt the same way at some point, the desire to fit in overwhelming your independence. It's only now nearing the end of my senior year that I realized how important this independence is. By pursuing your own path, you discover who you are and what you truly care about. Sometimes even finding people with similar interests along the way. I know we're all pulled by a million different passions, but at the end of the day, it's us, the weight at the end of the tether, who makes the final decision. Maybe physics would like, would like to disagree, Mr. Lennox, but I've had enough of Isaac Newton in my lifetime. Look, as we go off to college, the army, trade schools, and other post-secondary plans, 
I want all of us East Greenwich High School graduates to pursue what truly interests us. Dive deeply into what you care about. Advocate fiercely for what matters to you. And as Mahatma Gandhi once said, on greedy cards and poorly created Pinterest everywhere, be the change you wish to see in the world. But in exploring these new things, remember that independence doesn't necessarily mean being lonely. It can also mean having people there ready to help mold and motivate you to achieve your goals. At East Greenwich High School, we're lucky enough to have such a strong support system there already. We've got teachers like Mr. DQ Bellis, who wait hours after school to help with college essays. We've got great janitors who helped me out when I left my Chromebook, backpack, and phone in a blocked classroom after school this year. Not to mention the ever so helpful guidance counselors, the lunch crew over at our Aramark, and the wonderfully scary disciplinarians, and Dr. Heath and Mr. P -P -P Pedraza. I am so, so glad I never got to know the two of you well. Apart from the spectacular teachers and administration, we've also got a group of really amazing, helpful, and caring kids. When I look at our class, I think of altruistic Matt Tatican, who'll drop everything to help someone. And yes, Matt, I am still sorry for sixth grade badminton finals. I also think of hilarious Anthony Purcell, whose texts meant for Katie somehow end up with me. My mind also pictures people like the infamous Owen Hirshhorn, whose invaluable help on ninth grade, ninth grade quiz corrections has propelled me to the top of my class. Thanks, Owen, for holding that over me for the past four years. And of course, I've got to thank my family most of all. My sister for helping me with my work, despite being two years younger than me. My dad for checking my college admissions portals more often than I did. But I'd especially like to thank my mom. She might not be able to speak English very well, but she speaks selflessness and compassion as if it were her primary language. Honestly, I don't know many people who would make me coffee at 3.45 a.m. or comfort me after a bad day at school, all while running her own business. But my mother is certainly one of them. I know this has been kind of long, maybe about as long as the Romanticism study guide, if any of you remember that. And at this point, I'm assuming you're in either of two stages, paying attention or severely distracted, your face buried in Addison Rae's newest TikTok. In either case, I don't blame you. We've made it. So congratulations to the East Greenwich High School class of 2020. Born slightly after 9-11 and graduating during a pandemic, we've certainly known our fair share of adversity. But as we go on, I hope we persevere using our interests and passions to ultimately make a lasting difference in the world. Make it count, Avengers. The future is in our hands and shining bright. Thank you. When you're down and trouble and you need a helping hand And nothing, oh, nothing's going right Close your eyes and think of me And soon I will be there To brighten up even your darkest nights You just call out my name And you know wherever I am I'll come running mm -hmm, To see you again Winter, spring, summer, or fall All you've got to do is call And I'll be there, yeah, yeah, yeah You've got a friend If the sky above you should turn dark and full of clouds And that old north wind should begin to blow Keep 
keep your head together and call my name out loud soon i'll be knocking upon your door you just call out my name and you know I'll come running, ooh, yes I will, to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you've got to do is call, and I'll be there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, ain't it good to know but you've got a friend When people can be so cold They'll hurt you And desert you Well, they'll take your soul If you let them Now, don't you let them You just call out my name And you know I'll come running, ooh, yes I will, to see you again. Ooh, baby, don't you know it now? Winter, spring, summer, or fall. All you got to do is call, and I'll be there, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a friend. You've got a friend Ain't it good to know That you've got a friend Ain't it good to know You've got a friend mm. You've got a friend Hi, my name is Samantha Caterson and I'm here to announce East Greenwich High School's 2020 Outstanding Senior Award. This person is constantly laughing and always finds a way to put a smile on someone else's face. She's outstanding on the basketball court, the talent show stage, and also everywhere in between. It is my absolute pleasure to announce this year's 2020 Outstanding Senior is Brenda McKinney. Hello and congratulations to the class of 2020 and their families. It is an amazing feat to be able to get to this point and the greatest contributor to this success is you. All of you have worked so hard these past 12 years for this moment. However, the last four years specifically wouldn't have gone so smoothly if it weren't for our two exceptional advisors, Mrs. Munzer and Mrs. Agresti. Since the very first day of our freshman year, they made it their mission to ensure that we had the best high school experience this was not an easy undertaking. They had started off by hanging up signs around the school, inviting the members of the class of 2020 to get involved. Then we saw their creativity shine through during Deca Corner, Air Band, Prom, various fundraisers, and lastly, the senior week that we had nearly finished planning. For someone who has been a part of the class council and knows what the behind the scenes looks like, let me tell you just how lucky we were to have art teacher advisors. Not only have they raised the overall spirit of our grade, but they have also celebrated each and every one of us. We cannot thank you two enough for all that you have done. Mrs. Munzer and Mrs. Agresti, the passion you both have for being advisors is remarkable, and the memories you have helped us make will not be forgotten. We would like to thank everyone for their time, dedication, patience, and creativity to make this graduation a reality. When we first signed up to be class advisors, Mrs. Munzit said to me, the one thing that I am nervous about is the graduation speech. And look at us now, our heads are four feet tall on a giant screen. Great. Let me tell you, those nerves haven't gone away. But let's not think about that. Do you remember that we were so excited that we scheduled to meet with the class council while they were still in eighth grade? We were so excited to help them start their high school journey. We thought you were lucky to have us. 
But over these last four years, it has been clear that we were the ones that are lucky to have you. Little did we know that we would learn so much from this class. A huge shout out to our always awesome, always large class council board. <laughs> we were very fortunate to have such a dedicated board that really stepped up to leading this outstanding class. We all certainly didn't waste a minute planning and prepping for what would be a truly remarkable class of many firsts. Seriously, like how about our pep rally and air band? I'll never forget the look on the upperclassmen's faces when they saw our class's deco corner and all the props for air band. It isn't typical for freshmen to have it all figured out so early on. But with our combined excitement and the class's motivation, we created some amazing memories. I'm not really sure who loved Air Band more, me or the class. I know Mrs. Agresti's <laughs> answer to that one. And I still can't believe you got me to get up on that stage. I love watching <laughs> you on that stage. But freshman year was just a small glimpse at what this class was going to accomplish. You're right. The motivation and excitement to be involved is what makes the class of 2020 stand out. Are you really surprised? That meant spending lots of time with us. And who wouldn't want that? <laughs> True, we are a lot of fun. So always remember that your drive will continue to inspire others. Having a class ready to work hard, we challenge them to think big and outside the box. Mrs. Agresti, what was one of your favorite events that made this class so unique? Probably the EG Rumble, our family fun obstacle course. To think that this class put together such a big event as just freshmen and sophomores. It was a great accomplishment for our class. This event was so much fun and it even brought the EG community together. So remember, when you are off to that next stage in your life, even at your young age, you have the power to bring people together. And Mrs. Munzer, what was your favorite event? Oh, that's easy. Prom. Again, this was a huge event that took months and months of planning and prepping. But watching the students' faces as they walked into the incredible venue made every minute worth it. Mm -hmm. Everyone that attended the class of 2020 prom would agree that this class hosted an epic prom, one for the history books. And thank goodness, since it was our only so remember, when there are obstacles, you have the ability to accomplish great things. And now, to top it all off, we are here at the first drive-in graduation, together, celebrating the amazing class of 2020, a class full of new ideas. We will forever be grateful for the, all that we learned through the class and the countless hours of fun. On March 12th, none of us had a clue that we would not be seeing each other again. And it brings tears to my eyes that we did not get to have our proper goodbyes. But what is a goodbye anyways? Goodbye, it sounds like we are no longer connected and that is far from the truth. We are all part of the class of 2020. We will always be connected as a class and we are all connected to EGHS. Even though you didn't plant the ivy, you are all still rooted deeply here at EGHS and we will be here. We will continue to nourish the ground from which you grew, grow like wildfire. Move across the world and show the world what you're capable of, of. And if you can, come back and see us. As teachers, at the end of each year, we spend some extra time reflecting on our seniors. It's always astonishing how quickly four years goes. How can it have already been four years since we met this class? You all came in with your walls up, too nervous to say or do the wrong thing. Well, most of you, we all welcomed you, hesitantly, wondering, was this going to be a remarkable class or that class that will drive us nuts for the next four years? In the end, we always love our seniors. We want you to grow and change into remarkable young adults. We form understanding groups. Then every year, we are faced with the difficult task of saying goodbye and wonder how the next year will be without your faces here in the halls of EGHS. Some years are more difficult than others. This year is going to be next to impossible for Mrs. Agresti and I. This class, the class of 2020, has truly put a huge stamp on our hearts. You all never cease to amaze us with all of your accomplishments, kindness, creativity, and generosity. The class of 2020 will certainly be remembered in the history books as a class that graduated during the pandemic. However, for us, this class will be remembered as our class, the class of 2020. Now always remember, Make thoughtful decisions, follow your dreams, travel, and never forget where you can find us. Back here, where your journey began. We, we love, love you, seniors. Good afternoon. Mr. Pedraza, Dr. Heath, Ms. Agresti, Ms. Munzer, distinguished faculty and staff, and most importantly, members of the East Greenwich High School class of 2020. 
It is a great honor to speak with you today as we celebrate your high school graduation. When thinking about composing my remarks for today's occasion, the concept of a moment in time or a moment of first emerged. It is perhaps a profound and proud moment of first for me as a new superintendent of schools to address a high school graduating class, but not a first for me to speak with you at a graduation ceremony. I believe we were together for your middle school graduation at Cole in June of 2016. However, today is not about me. It is all about you and the recognition of your accomplishments. I think it is fair to say that a drive-in graduation ceremony with screens on a truck is a first for East Greenwich High School. The physical surroundings we find ourselves in today in no way diminish the emotions that accompany a graduation ceremony. We celebrate you, the class of 2020, with a sense of pride, being in awe of how you have grown as learners and all that you have accomplished. In June of 2019, for the first time, the senior class took a trip down memory lane and visited their elementary schools in Cole. I am sorry you didn't get that opportunity. However, I ask that you take a moment now to reflect on your time in elementary and middle school. Think about your teachers, staff members, mentors, coaches, friends, and classmates at Frenchtown or Meadowbrook, Eldridge or Hannaford and Cole. It was those collective experiences, the meaningful relationship, your time as Avengers, and the support of your parents and families that bring you to the place you are today. Take this moment of first, that moment in time, a global pandemic that forced so much of what we know as everyday or normal life to stop in its tracks and use this as a learning opportunity and springboard to innovate and think differently about your world. Notice the silver linings of caring for others, being nimble and creative, and service to your community. You epitomize our vision of a graduate, knowledgeable, competent, connected, and reflective. You are ready for the next steps in your young life, and I wish you all the best. Enjoy this day and the joyful celebration of your high school graduation. And remember, be kind to one another. It is wonderful and important to gather to tell the story of the class of 2020. In these times of quarantining, social distancing, and talk of a new normal, Many of us try to escape the difficulties, even just temporarily, through stories. As those who have taken class with Mrs. Fallow are shown through Daniel Quinn's novel Ishmael, there is unimaginable power in stories. In Ishmael, Quinn sets out three definitions the main character must first understand in order to make sense of the journey that he is about to undertake. First, story. A story is a scenario interrelating man, the world, and the gods. Second, to enact. To enact a story is to live as so to make that story a reality. So in other words, to enact a story is to strive to make it come true. Third, culture. Culture is a people enacting a story. For the past four years, you have been involved in multiple stories some typical, some not. Some you choose, others choose you. This year alone has created new stories that no one ever expected or wanted to tell. All of these stories are now blended to make a new and unique story of the class of 2020. East Greenwich High School has a story too. By becoming a graduate today, you have reached what may be the final chapter of your EGHS story. Through graduation, you take part in actions that make the story of East Greenwich High School and its mission a reality. Finally, you have all been part of creating the East Greenwich High School culture. Whether you strive to accomplish the mission by taking new challenging experiences and courses of study in order to be empowered through learning, or if you took the path others had laid out for you to take to get here today, you have all played a part in making what EGHS culture is and will be. Now, ultimately, what does this all mean? It means that as graduates, you are now responsible to choose which stories you are now going to enact. 
As your high school career comes to a close, I urge you to do two things. First, critique the stories others want you to tell and want you to enact. And second, create and choose powerful stories that empower both yourself and others. You must create critique stories because there are far too many being told where others are to blame, where others are out to take what you have, where if the others would just change or listen or be gone, then all of this would be so much easier. Once you enact these stories of others to blame, there is no going back because you have now inadvertently become someone else's other, someone to be overcome, someone who isn't deserving, someone who is to blame, and back and forth and round and round it goes. Instead, choose stories that while more difficult to enact, are far more satisfying. Enact stories that make life's inevitable hardships, disappointments, and failures your motivation to do and be better. Be part of stories that embrace this world that has infinite and undiscovered marvels, along with millions of amazing people who are willing to share what they have and help anyone in their times of need. Choose to enact empowering stories because, to paraphrase Mark Manson, it might not be your fault, but it is your responsibility. In closing, I urge the class of 2020 to tell stories of life that are big, bold, and better than you think are possible. Tell them to as many people who will listen. Defend them vehemently against those who will attack your story as impossible or who claim that others are the real problem. Most importantly, don't just tell grand stories, live them, enact them. When you do, you will change our world for the better, just the way you have changed East Greenwich High School. Thank you.